Flames broke out at a vacant east side home. Katrina Weber tells us what led a neighbor to jump into action. The San Antonio Zoo has taken a hard hit from the coronavirus pandemic. Sarah Costa tells us how you can help in today's Wish List Wednesday. And we're seeing a pattern shift, which means rain chances return to the forecast. We'll talk about when and where coming up. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. New at noon, a man facing a murder charge after he allegedly assaulted a man who later died from his injuries. It happened back on July 10th of last year near the Bardwalk area west of Priner One Center in Kerrville. According to police, the victim suffered severe head injuries. Police say that he remained unconscious since that assault. He died in April at a nursing care facility. 35 year old Alexander Scott Haley now facing murder charges. He's being held on a $250,000 bond. A fire inside a vacant house on the east side has left a big question mark in the minds of some people. Neighbors and firefighters both wondering how it got started. It broke out overnight in the 200 block of Paul Street. That's not too far from St. Gerald High School. As Katrina Weber reports, damage from this fire may cause setbacks in someone's renovation plans. Fire moved in unexpectedly to a house that had nothing that would have made it a home. There were no furnishings or working electricity. Still, when firefighters arrived after 3.30 this morning, the flames and smoke had made themselves at home on the second level, burning right through the floor. I'm going to say a hole about the size of a basketball. Um, burn through it with charring around it into the wood. That unusual burn pattern caused them to call in an arson team. Firefighters say the house in the 200 block of Paul Street was empty, although it looked like someone had plans to make it livable again. There are some construction type materials in there, such as a ladder, stuff like that. Uh, but not, nobody is living there. While firefighters say it looks like this house was undergoing renovations, a neighbor told me she hasn't seen anyone working here since last summer, and she wonders if someone else may have been inside. That neighbor told me off camera she heard noises, almost like someone tossing items inside the house shortly before she noticed the flames. It was enough to get her attention and make her call 911. It doesn't appear like it was a squatter issue, but that's something that uh, arson will determine. Firefighters say they did notice an open door when they got here, but they weren't sure right away if police who arrived before them were responsible or if that could be another clue linked to the fire. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Servicemen and women honored this morning at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery with a private wreath laying ceremony. That ceremony began around 830. It included brief remarks, a moment of silence and the playing of taps. The ceremony, though, closed to the public due to the coronavirus pandemic. The traditional public Memorial Day ceremony has been canceled for this year. The cemetery, though, will remain open on Memorial Day weekend for visitation, but visitors are being asked to follow social distancing guidelines and consider visiting over the weekend to avoid possible crowds on Monday. Governor Greg Abbott announced today the Texas Department of State Health Services is distributing nine cases of the antiviral drug remdesivir to five hospitals here in San Antonio. These cases have been provided through the Department of Health and Human Services. Last week, 30 cases of remdesivir were distributed to 15 hospitals across the state. Mayor Ron Durenberg and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf ordering an extension of the stay home work safe orders yesterday. That's after dozens more people tested positive for the coronavirus here in San Antonio. Let's take a look at the numbers. Uh, there are more than 2,200 cases now in Bear County. More than 1,100 people have recovered. The death toll stays the same. It's at 62. But the number of people in the hospital has actually risen to 80. 1,084 people still fighting this illness. Officials have confirmed another HEB employee has tested positive for coronavirus. The employee worked at the store located in the Macrillis Market on the southeast side. That's in the 4100 block of South New Bromble's. The employee was last in the store on Tuesday, May 5th. HEB posted on its website saying the store has been deep cleaned and sanitized multiple times. This location does have curbside pickup and delivery for those who are concerned about going inside. 
All 50 states now relaxing at least some of the restrictions and the CDC releasing a 60 page document offering advice on how to do it safely. This is President Donald Trump defends his use of hydroxychloroquine, an anti-malaria and lupus drug that hasn't been proven to help with COVID-19. ABC's Inez Delicatera is in Washington. She has the latest. This morning, all 50 states easing some form of COVID-19 social distancing restrictions, with Connecticut the final state to partially reopen. We can proceed on a very thoughtful basis with those businesses that are least likely to be dangerous, most likely to have a real economic value for the state. This as the CDC releases its new guidelines meant to help the nation reopen, focusing on schools, restaurants and public transit. The document's initial release was delayed by the White House over concerns it was too specific. As he continues to push for the nation to get back to business, President Trump's admission he's been taking hydroxychloroquine and zinc for the past week and a half as a preventative measure for COVID-19 still being met with confusion. That's because there is no evidence it can help prevent COVID-19, and the FDA says it can actually cause serious heart rhythm problems. I happen to be taken. Hydroxychloroquine. I'm taking it. Hydroxychloroquine. Right now, yeah. ABC News affiliate WISN speaking with a woman in Wisconsin who's had lupus for most of her life and has been taking hydroxychloroquine for 19 years to treat it. She says she's still tested positive for COVID-19. Studies are ongoing to find out if the drug has any protective benefits. How can I be sick? How? With, I'm on hydroxychloroquine. And they're like, well, nobody's ever said that was the cure. Last month, the FDA recommended against the use of hydroxychloroquine outside of hospitals and clinical trials. But now the FDA commissioner tells CNBC the decision to take any drug is ultimately between a patient and their doctor. Inez de Liquitera, ABC News, Washington. The San Antonio Zoo has suffered during the COVID-19 pandemic, but one thing's for sure, all beloved animals at the San Antonio Zoo wouldn't be happy without and healthy without their zookeepers. So Sarah Costa tells us how you can help those zookeepers. It is for Wishlist Wednesday. The San Antonio Zoo has taken a hard hit due to COVID-19 pandemic, and that's because the zoo depends on 100% of donations and ticket sales to operate. When the zoo closed its gates in March for the pandemic, zookeepers continue to take care of the zoo's animals. Without the love, attention, and care from the zookeepers, the animals wouldn't be healthy and happy. You know, no matter whether we're open or closed, I mean, the animals need to be fed. Um, I mean, just looking at like the rhinos and the giraffe, I mean, to feed the two rhino girls, it's almost over $1,200 a month for the, for the rhino girls and the same about for the giraffe. Um, so no matter, no matter whether we're open or closed, whether we have revenue coming in or not, the animals need to be fed. By adopting a keeper, your contribution helps provide resources like towards the zoo crew to continue their world-class animal care in San Antonio. There are a couple ways you can help out. You can purchase tickets for the zoo drive through donate to the zoo's emergency fund, purchase an annual pass or virtual tour, or you can directly donate to the Adopt-A-Keeper Fund. And of course, you can find all these ways to donate right now on KSAT.com. Reporting from home. Once again, that was Sarah Costa. Texas voters can now vote by mail. The ruling was issued yesterday afternoon by a federal judge here in San Antonio. District Judge Fred Beery said, quote, the court finds the Grim Reaper's scepter of pandemic disease and death is far more serious than an unsupported fear of voter fraud, end quote. But the ruling doesn't mean the battle is over yet. Attorney General King Paston says his office will seek immediate review over the ruling. The Bear County runoff elections are scheduled for July and the general election is in November. And later today, City Council will have a session to talk about the coronavirus pandemic in San Antonio. It's expected to start around two this afternoon and we will be live streaming this meeting on KSAD.com. And as the city begins to reopen, the city providing small businesses and local nonprofit organizations with free safety kits as they prepare. Each safety kit includes one contact-free thermometer, 
two gallons of hand sanitizer and face masks. In order to qualify for the safety kits, businesses and organizations must serve the public at a location in the city. They must also have experienced an impact from forced closures due to the pandemic, have no more than 25 employees and have been in operation before March 1st. We have more information on how to register for a safety kit right now on KSAT.com. Northside ISD announcing it will not host in-person graduation ceremonies at the Alamo Dome after all. Instead, it's going to have a safe graduation recognition event at each high school the week of June 15th. Graduates will be able to walk across the auditorium stage and take photos. Seniors will wear their cap and gowns along with their cords and stoles. There will be a limit of only four guests per graduate. Everyone will be required to practice social distancing and will have to wear masks. And ISD will be sending a video of the event to students in early July. San Antonio Public Library hosting a virtual celebration recognizing its 25 years of service to the community. The virtual event begins today on its social media with an historical grand opening day slideshow video. Tomorrow there's a podcast and Friday there's going to be red enchilada cooking segment. We've got a list of all the events from today through Saturday right now on KSET.com. Former Vice President Joe Biden won Oregon's Democratic presidential primary. Still ahead, what some polls are showing, though, ahead of the 2020 presidential election. And good news for high school athletes. The UIL ready to let students start working out again. Larry Ramirez with all the details coming up in sports. Plus, a local high school student didn't let her struggles get in the way of her college dreams. After the break, we've got her incredible story. For one local high school senior, what started as a year of questions of where she was going to live ended with a scholarship, success, and a story of determination. Caitlin Vela Mota of the Northeast Independent School District has exemplified academic perseverance. And this is why, from being unsure of where she would even live to not being able to afford housing, the high school senior says she was in a scary situation, but she powered through the struggles and never gave up. Some of her peers, teachers, and even counselors say they have learned a lot from her. She will be attending the University of Texas at Austin in the fall and will study chemical engineering. If you'd like to learn more, we've got the full story right now on KSET.com. And she is an inspiration. We had a little of that at nine today, so go check that out. I hope that she is keeping it cool. <laughs> this week because uh, it is going to be a scorcher. Yeah, we had a hot one yesterday, a hot one again today, maybe a little bit cooler than yesterday, thankfully. And uh, the aquifer starting to drop off a little bit. We had seen it rise for several days, now starting to come down some. It's down two tenths of a foot to 665.2. In your pollen count, the uh, molds in the moderate category, it's on its way down. Grass and pigweed are low. We do have some rain chances returning to the forecast, but how much rain will we see? We'll take a look coming up. We came close to 100 yesterday, but we didn't hit it, right? No. Not quite. Not no, quite. but we, there was a record hit somewhere. Yeah, it was still real. They got yeah. 108. Ooh. Uh, you know, it, it, it got hot yesterday, not as hot as 99 or 100, but it, we made up for it with humidity because the heat index jumped up. It before. felt like it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, either way, you slice it, it's hot out there. We're going to see another day of that. Humidity levels are still high today. Uh, we did see added moisture this morning, too, which resulted in some morning cloud cover. That's pretty much melted away here across Bear County. You can see we've got most of clear skies. Temperatures checking in at 85 degrees at the airport, 86 Port SA, 85 right now in Seguin, 87 in New Braunfels. The morning clouds are a little thicker out west, but even those are starting to dissipate. You will notice we've got some cloud cover and a few uh, clouds trying to pop up around uh, Del Rio. That's resulted in some light showers, not, uh, not much rain out of this, but a little instability in the atmosphere out there. We'll check in on the radar in just a second. Take a look at this time lapse. I'll show you the morning clouds and uh, you can see they rolled in right there and then as quickly as they came in, yeah, they were gone. 85 degrees. Dew point is at 70 right now, so that makes it feel quite a bit warmer when you have dew points that high and easterly winds at about six miles per hour. Dew points are in the 70s everywhere. We saw this issue yesterday. We thought we'd see the dew point fall off a little bit in the afternoon. That generally allows the air temperature to rise up a little bit. 
but the, the moisture just didn't mix out yesterday afternoon. And right now it doesn't look like it wants to do that today either. So uh, keep in mind that the heat index is going to tack on a couple of degrees. This is what it feels like here in town right now. 89 feels like 96 in Creso Springs already feels like 101 in Catula. As we look at the forecast heat index for this afternoon, it could go as high as 99 here in town. I think we'll see plenty of triple digits for your feels like temperatures out west as well. Even places like Gonzales will see a heat index potentially of 102 a little bit later today. So it's very, very summer like uh, we mentioned some of those light showers. I mean, these are really light here, probably. Well, some of this might be reaching the ground as a sprinkle or two, but that's it. Uh, we're not expecting much development, at least over the next couple of hours. Now, as we get into this evening and tonight, we could see some showers and storms develop out west. And that's what our computer model is telling us. This is around five o'clock. Most of this will be west of the Rio Grande, but may work across uh, overnight. And of course, the question always becomes, will these develop into a complex of showers and storms or work their way towards I-35? It's possible, not likely, but it's possible in this particular model does uh, bring some storms that were out in West Texas and bring them all the way down towards San Antonio around three o'clock tomorrow tomorrow morning. We'll have to watch for that. It can always happen this time of year, and that'll be the case again Thursday night into Friday morning as well. So some of these nocturnal complexes may uh, at least get close to San Antonio. We'll leave a 20% chance of rain in there for that. Otherwise, uh, if we do see storms develop out West tonight, there's a marginal risk of some severe weather. It's low end, but it is there. Big picture here shows we still got a lot of unsettled weather off to the east. This area of low pressure just doesn't want to move. That's why there's flooding still ongoing in parts of Michigan and the more active weather off to the west. Our long term forecast here, I think just some isolated stuff. We'll get some disturbances rolling through tomorrow, Friday, Saturday. A little stronger system works in Sunday into Monday and that will result in scattered downpours. Although I think at this point it doesn't look like a washout for Memorial Day weekend, but there will be some rain around. Temperatures today up around 94, 20% chance of rain mainly out west, 91 tomorrow, 90 on Friday. We'll watch for some of those overnight storms. 30% chance of rain Saturday, 40% chance Sunday into Monday. Scattered stuff and that'll bring the temperatures down a little bit too, guys. We could use that for yes. sure. Thank you, Justin. It's the one email effect. Just one email is all it takes to get high school kids all over the state of Texas just fired up. And the UIL is still working out details, but starting Monday, June 8th, UIL sports, football in particular, they can start doing some limited strength and conditioning programs. And you know Clemens head coach Jared Johnson is stoked about that. Plus, the NBA draft lottery, how's it going to be this year? Well, it probably won't change. Coming up. Having that, that, that sign of hope that, uh, you know, that, that we're going to be able to continue, uh, you know, playing sports and doing what we need to do and, and really just getting back to being normal again uh, is it, it, just super positive and, and just glad that, that there's some hope ahead of us. Clemens head football coach Jared Johnson is ready to get back to normal and see his young man in person. There's light at the end of the tunnel in big board sports. Some very great news here. High school athletics in Texas, including football, is on the way back. In an email sent to Texas high school athletic directors, the UIL plans to begin limited summer strength and conditioning and banned activities on Monday, June 8th. The governing body overseeing high school sports in the state is still ironing out details before allowing practices to go on. UIL says as soon as they have the details of that plan, they will release them to schools to allow time to plan and prepare for bringing students back to campus for these purposes. They hope to have those details released to you this week. Clemens head football coach Jared Johnson is more than ready to get going. I'll tell you what, when, when we got the word and, and, and got the emails and uh, you know, it's just super excited to be honest with you. It, it was just one of those deals where you're just, uh, you know, it's like you, you start to see a light at the end of the tunnel uh, and, and you just, you know, I, I don't know, it felt like it felt like I opened up a Christmas gift and, and, and it was some good news, uh, you know, so uh, just super excited, you know, really for our kids. Christmas in July. Coach Johnson also thanked the Buffalo superintendent, the administrative staff, principal teachers, and everybody else who kept the school going and joined efforts to keep the kids successful academically. Once in place, the kids will have to follow social distancing policies. UIL says it is working with the appropriate state officials.
the NBA draft lottery was supposed to take place last night. Like everything else in the NBA, that is now on hold with no def definite new date in sight. It appears impossible at this point to finish the entire 82 game schedule due to the suspension of play due to COVID-19 pandemic. Team executives still expect the same format to take place when the lottery is held. If that's the case and no other regular season games are played, then the teams with the best shot at the number one pick in the NBA draft are the Golden State Warriors, Cleveland Cavaliers, and Minnesota Timberwolves, all with the three worst records. The Warriors, Cavs, and Wolves would have a 14% chance in landing the number one pick with Atlanta and Detroit to follow at 12 and a half and 10 and a half percent respectively. So here are those best odds to win the NBA lottery. If the regular season ended now, you have Golden State, Cleveland and Minnesota all tied at 14%. You have Atlanta and Detroit rounding out the top five. You have New York at number six, Chicago seven, Charlotte eight, Washington nine, Phoenix and 10. And the Spurs have just a 2% chance. But you never know how those Balls of the numbers are going to bounce around. They wouldn't, weren't supposed to get that number one pick back when they got Tim Duncan. Either. There you go, so, see? So maybe it'll work Fingers out. Fingers crossed. All right. <laughs> At least they're in the lottery. It could happen again. Yeah, it could. A rapidly rising water overtook dams and forced the evacuation of about 10,000 people in central Michigan. What coronavirus-related restrictions had to be lifted in order to get people to safety? Memorial Day sales in the new age of shopping. How stores are hoping to gain a boost after that record drop in retail sales last month. President Trump is scheduled to meet with the governors of Arkansas and Kansas at the White House this afternoon. They're expected to discuss their state's partnership with the federal government as they reopen amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Arkansas's Republican governor, Asa Hutchinson, has been saying that bars and restaurants were free to open in many parts of the state. Kansas Democratic Governor Laura Kelly, meanwhile, announcing yesterday that her state is going to move to phase two of reopening this Friday. That includes allowing organized sports tournaments and practices. Former Vice President Joe Biden won Oregon's Democratic presidential primary and new polls in three battleground states show President Trump trailing Biden. Those states are Arizona, Florida and Virginia. In Arizona, 600 person survey shows the former vice president with a seven point advantage. In Florida, a poll of more than 2100 people gives Biden close to five points over president. And in Virginia, Biden is up by 12 points. The polls were conducted by the Roanoke College Point Blank Political and OH Predictive Insights. As the Midwest battles the pandemic, some areas are now finding themselves underwater. Heavy rainfall creating historic flood conditions in Michigan. The governor there having to lift stay at home orders to get people evacuated. Trevor Alt has details. Days of torrential rainfall pummeling the Midwest, leading to catastrophic flooding in multiple states. Michigan, the hardest hit, with at least two dams collapsing under the torrent of water. Officials in Midland, Michigan, calling this a 500 year flood. One river expected to crest four feet higher than its previous record back in 1986. The roaring floodwaters easily swallowing up trees, nearly submerging street signs, and barreling toward towns downstream. All of that is soon to be up here. With downtown Midland expected to be under nine feet of water, more than 10,000 people now forced to flee their homes. Governor Gretchen Whitmer declaring a state of emergency, forced to lift COVID-19 restrictions to ease evacuations and rescues. To go through this in the midst of a global pandemic is almost unthinkable. Let's try to continue to protect ourselves in this moment on top of all the other stress that we're going through. These heavy rains have been battering the Midwest since Thursday, almost a full week now, and Ohio and Illinois are dealing with extensive flooding, too. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. A powerful cyclone has slammed into the coastline of India and Bangladesh. More than 2.6 million people evacuated, and they went to shelters. The frenetic move made all the more challenging by the coronavirus pandemic. The cyclone packed a punch, the storm equivalent of a Category 3 hurricane. Authorities warn it could cause extensive damage to some houses and a storm surge may push seawater inland, flooding crowded cities. Meanwhile here, no rain, no flooding, 
Lots of heat. Yeah, just clear skies and temperatures are on the way up. 85 degrees right now here in San Antonio. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that cyclone. It is causing major problems there in India and Bangladesh. Of course, uh, in the Indian Ocean, and we'll show you where that storm is right now. Pretty powerful system. Look how big it is. Winds are at 85 miles per hour, gusting to 105. And it's going to put down torrential rain for those folks. Their uh, season, obviously. Uh, they're in the midst of their season. Uh, Atlanta hurricane season, by the way, starts June 1st. We've already had one name storm, but it will start ramping up here soon. Uh, outside right now, we've got uh, mostly clear skies here in Bear County. A few clouds off to the west. Those are quickly fading away. And we've also got uh, maybe a few clouds around Gonzales, but all in all, mostly sunny skies for most of us. And then a little bit of uh, a cloud cover out there around Del Rio, too. No rain really with that, maybe a sprinkle or two. But we could see some showers and storms a little bit later tonight out west. Uh, temperatures 87 in New Braunfels, 85 Randolph, 84 Stinson, 90 right now Pleasanton. And the forecast for today, Texas up to 94. There is an outside chance for a storm or two uh, by 7 o'clock, 10 o'clock out to the west. And we'll see some more chances in the coming days. We'll have another glance at that seven-day forecast here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Gyms in our area were given permission to reopen this week. However, if you just don't feel comfortable working out in one yet, you can get a great form of exercise right outside your door. CNN's Britt Conway has tips on how to inject some life into your daily walks. Walking outside. It's free. You don't need equipment and you can stay as far away from people as you want. And here are five great ways to boost your walks. Number one, speed intervals. Instead of walking at one pace the whole time, break your walk up into blocks and alternate back and forth between a regular pace and a brisk pace. That'll get your heart rate up and improve your aerobic capacity. Number two, engage your core. Get those abs burning by squeezing your glutes and pulling your navel towards your spine. And make sure you're hitting the ground with a heel-to-toe foot strike. Number three, add lower body strength training. In between intervals, change it up by doing a few squats or lunges, targeting some of those bigger muscle groups in your legs. Number four, add upper body strength training. No weights needed for these moves. While walking, include moves that focus on toning your back and arms, like shoulder blade squeezes and lat pull down moves. And number five, meditate as you move. Take advantage of being outside away from your computer and TV, breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. This practice can help center your focus and move you through feelings of anxiety and stress. For today's Health Minute, I'm Britt Conway. Don't forget to leave your cell phone at home when you do that, by the way. Fish in the sea have a lot more to worry about than Jaws 50 million years ago. Would you believe saber-toothed anchovies existed? Why scientists think that is true. And proof Tom Brady is really a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Larry Ramirez got the pictures coming up. New college graduates are set to enter the best job market in a half a century. Yeah, that changed in their final semester. Coming up after the break, we're going to take a look at what's next for the class of 2020. When college seniors entered their final year just last fall, the national unemployment rate was at a near record low of 3.7%. Today, it's a jaw dropping 14.7%. Graduates entering the labor market during a recession are shown to earn less than those who enter during a healthy economy for at least 10 to 15 years. Those job market challenges are leading some colleges to take matters into their own hands. Colby College in Maine is already making good on its promise to get job offers for 100 percent of its graduating seniors. What we're trying to do is identify job opportunities for all 500 of our graduating seniors and to be able to do that in one of the toughest job markets we've ever seen. Right now, the jobless rate for those aged 20 to 24 is at 25.7%. Facebook is lending assistance to small businesses with a new app. The app is called Facebook Shops, and it'll make it easier for companies to create a single online store for customers to access them on Facebook and Instagram, all free of charge. Facebook says this new application will make buying and selling online more simple. And Memorial Day is coming up and many stores are hoping for an economic boost after sales and retails dropped last month. 
So even though retail spending is down as a whole, demand online is surging. Analytics from Adobe show online sales increased 49% from March to April. Quarantine has changed supply and demand. However, there are still some discounts to be found out there. The best deals are on appliances, mattresses, furniture, both indoor and outdoor furniture, and also spring clothing. Coats from Macy's more than 60% off. Target offering 20% off outdoor dining sets. And there is a buy one, get one free sale on swimwear. You can still find the typical sales this time of year, like discounts at Mattress Firm, Lowe's with up to 40% off some appliances, and REI having their biggest sale of the year, offering up to 30% off. In the spotlight this noon, a San Antonio native opening up about her time on the new Bachelor franchise show, Listen to Your Heart. 24-year-old Rudy quickly became a fan favorite due to her big personality and powerful voice. She tells us in an exclusive interview that she was intrigued by the show's premise of finding love while making music together. Rudy was coupled with Matt for most of the show. She says performing with him was a surreal experience. It was literally the most amazing thing that I've ever done in my whole entire life. And I always tell him, I'm like, I didn't think, because I'm so used to performing alone, right? So I didn't think that sharing the stage with someone would be even better, um, but it was. Rudy says even though her and Matt are not officially a couple, they do plan on releasing more music together. You can watch the full interview and even hear her sing part of her new single on KSAT.com. I think the trick is to make it look like they're a couple while they're singing. They don't have to be, <laughs> a, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> They might get more votes. If you they, could be right. You know. Yeah, I mean, that, that could be a whole, the whole thing. I is that know. is that humidity out there? That's well, that's, you're probably looking at some humidity there. It's been so thick the last couple of days. The, the heat index is jumping up, up over 100 degrees in some spots already. We saw that yesterday. I think we're going to see that again this afternoon. So far, we're up to 85 today. The low this morning, 73. That's it. Didn't drop down much. The record is 100 set back in 1996. Thankfully, that's not in jeopardy, but again, keep in mind that heat index may jump over the century mark. We've got a look at some of our rain chances coming up. So with all this humidity in the air, you would think that there would be some rain somewhere around somewhere. Well, likely someday soon there will yes. probably be some rain Hopefully. in the air there are some chances coming up although i, I gotta tell you i don't know we're gonna see a ton of rain out of our next couple of systems but th there will be showers and storms around and hopefully some of us will get some beneficial rain because we could use some more the aquifer has started dropping again by the way uh, i want to show you some data this is from climate central this is actually about travel so why is a meteorologist talking about travel here well well it, it plays an important part and you'll see in april this is because of covid uh, travel in Texas dropped off some 80% from where we normally uh, see it. It's starting to gain back a little bit, but what has happened is uh, because there's less travel across the state and across the country in general, we're seeing uh, less uh, nitrogen dioxide, which is actually helping the atmosphere. So this has been a byproduct of COVID. It's been really interesting to see it and how it's going to affect our atmosphere, uh, but just something to throw in there. And that we'll be looking at the data uh, in the coming months, NASA is going to re release some more of that to see how it is affecting greenhouse gases and all that sort of thing. So anyway, uh, interesting tidbit there. Uh, meantime, let's uh, go outside for you. If we can, maybe we can't. We'll see. Oh, it looks like it's stuck. You have to look at this graph a little bit longer. Let me go see if I can work the graphics here. There we go. Temperatures right now, 85 degrees at the airport. 85 Randolph, 84 Stinson, 83 Canyon Lake, 87 right now in New Braunfels. It's a hot one, and we'll zoom out a little bit, and we'll show you that uh, temperatures are uh, warm elsewhere, too. 90 Catula, 90 in Carrizo Springs, and you've got the humidity to contend with, which means uh, there's going to be quite a heat index out there, too, in a lot of spots. Uh, right now, dew points are in the 70s, uh, just about everywhere. We saw this yesterday where those dew points just uh, they stayed high all day long, and that is resulting in heat indices that look like this uh, around the area generally around 100 in Pleasanton, 101 in Catula. Not as bad here in San Antonio, but we'll see that heat index jump into the 90s a little bit later today. All right, uh, looking at the forecast heat index, here you go, 99 here in San Antonio. We will see some triple digits out west. This is your feels like temperature, of course, and uh, we'll see some pretty big numbers. Okay, going forward now, uh, looks like we're seeing clear skies out there right now. Temperature is at 85. 
uh, here in San Antonio. Dew point is at 70, as we mentioned, easterly winds at about six miles per hour. The radar is uh, not giving us a whole lot. Visible satellite picture shows that uh, the clouds have basically gone away here. We've got some clouds out west. And let's go a little bit further west for you. I'll show you we've got a little bit of development in Mexico. That's an area we want to watch because we could see some storms flare up here and then eventually cross over the Rio Grande towards uh, Del Rio and Eagle Pass. But the radar really pretty quiet right now. And uh, I don't expect that we'll see much through the afternoon. It's probably the evening when we'll start to see those showers and storms flare up. So this is around 5 o'clock. This model shows a storm maybe west of Del Rio. And then some of that tries to cross over the Rio Grande. Every now and then these can form into those complexes, make their way towards I-35. Is it possible? Yes. Is it likely? No. But uh, this model shows some storms coming out of West Texas and working their way towards San Antonio tomorrow morning. We'll keep you posted. Again, I think the chances are low end, but they're not. Uh, I mean, they are there, so we have to watch it. That'll be the case again tomorrow night into Friday. Okay, uh, very quickly, a severe weather risk today. There is a marginal risk out west. A couple of storms could flare up, could be uh, on the strong side. And as we look forward in time here with our forecast, obviously pretty busy across the country, but uh, we'll see. One little disturbance uh, roll through that'll give us some isolated stuff Thursday into Friday, maybe into Saturday. And then by the time we get into Sunday, that's when the uh, storms or at least activity becomes a little more scattered. We could see some heavier downpours around the area, but it does not look like a complete washout this weekend. We'll just call for a 40% chance of rain Sunday into Monday. Forecast for today will be up around 94. The extended forecast look for uh, 91 Thursday, 90 on Friday. And then there are your rain chances Sunday into Monday, about a 40% chance right now, guys. All right, looking good. Thank you, Justin. Not totally convinced that Tom Brady is a Buccaneer yet, but I guess you're going to convince me here in just a second. I don't know. We that's have got, that's some a tough job. images of Tom Brady practicing with some of his Buccaneers teammates in his new Tampa Bay Buccaneers colors. So it is certainly weird to see. Speaking of college football, UTSA football coach, uh, Coach Trailer has been on the recruiting trail and his 2021 class is one of the best in the nation. And the star in Frisco is somewhat open for business. Coming up.